Good morning. The bell is ringing. It is time for worship at Trinity United Church. Thank you all for setting your clocks ahead. Thank you for being here. And it seems that everyone except Jocelyn thinks it's March break. That's okay. That's okay. Everyone's allowed and we are just so glad that you are with us, whether you're online or whether you're here in person. You are welcome. You'll see there is an extraordinary sheet of announcements and community goings on. I commend them to you. Put it on your fridge. I want your, 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 your promise that you will. Put it on the fridge and keep your eyes on it. Communion Sunday. We're going to have a communion at the end of March in two weeks. Um, fellowship Sunday will also be that week. Uh, we haven't had fellowship for quite a while, and it will be a treat. And as you can see, any instructions needed are written in the bulletin. Are there any announcements that I haven't got that I need to put out there? Yes. On the um, announcement for the Lions Club family day. Yes. It says Saturday. It's actually Sunday. Okay. The Lions Club family day. Yes. All right. It's actually Sunday. April the second. Sunday, April the second. It's on the third page. You'll see it. Corona Lions. The sun. It's on. This. The date is correct, but the date day is not. Sunday, April the second. Linda. I'll just add that the Community Children's Choir has been invited to sing at that event at the Lions Club. Oh, that's wonderful. Oh, good for them. Good for them. That's marvelous. All right, then. Shall we begin our worship?
Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Let, Let us follow the light of light, and we have the light, light in the world. <clears throat> O oh Christ, you said, ask and it will be given to you. Search and you will be to find. Knock and the door will be opened for you. Therefore, O oh God, we pray that you will quench our deepest thirst for acceptance, love, and peace. Fill our cup with your spirit till it overflows. May we drink to our heart's content at your will. May we live a life of blessing by giving to others what you give to us with generosity, courage, and hope. Amen. <laughs>
Today's reading from the Gospel is about the Samaritan woman at the well, and I think we've probably heard the story many, many times. Bless you. We've heard it many times. However, I would like to ask the question, and perhaps in a more sophisticated way, because most of us are over the age of majority here today. I'm not including Jocelyn, of course. What does it mean to you to be a neighbor? What does a neighbor do? Jocelyn. Give people sweets at Christmas time. Give people sweets at Christmas time. I want to be your neighbor. <laughs> We look out for each other. We look out for each other. Okay. One another. One another. Treat us like second parents. <laughs> I'm sorry? Treat us like second parents. Treat us like second parents. All right. Fair enough. What else? Like Linda said, always, always there to help each other. Always, always there. there to help yeah. each other. What do we do when the person, the other, because we've all put other in there, is someone really other. Someone of a different culture, someone who is not familiar to us, someone who in fact should not necessarily be a neighbor. That's what we're going to be talking about today. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The offering plates are at the back. You can feel free to put your donation there. And uh, we're going to have Voices, uh, Voices United, number 540. Um, we will sing it together. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. 
the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with songs. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the deep places of the earth. The strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if we, if he will hear his voice, harden not your heart, as in the provocation, and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my work, forty years long was I grieved with this generation, and said, It is a people that do err in their heart, and they have not known my ways. Unto whom I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. Thank you, Muriel. Apparently, it's only the second time that Muriel has done this. I think there's going to be at least a third. Thank you so much. Our gospel reading comes from the book of John. I'm reading from chapter 4, and I'm beginning at verse 5. Now, he had to go through Samaria. So he came to a town in Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of ground Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well. It was about noon. When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, Will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone into town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, You are a Jew, and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. Sir, the woman said, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself, as did also his sons and his livestock? Jesus answered, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I give them, will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw water. May God bless to our understanding this reading from Holy Scripture. Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give them will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be pleasing to you, O God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer of us all. Amen. This woman had the goal 
to come to the well in broad daylight. And when she came, she was bearing a load of emotional scars, social stigma, and outsider status. And yet, still she came because she needed to have water. And surely she was used to being judged, whispered about, and none too subtly avoided by the good citizens of this backwater Samaritan outpost. And yet she came, bearing her pain, carrying her jug, wielding a battered but unbroken and feisty pride. A simple but rather absurd request for water from a strange man was the pivot point on which her entire life would be turned. And once again, Jesus has crossed boundaries. He's cut through fear. And he looks someone in the eye and he reorients reality, which he has a tendency to do. He knew her place of need. And he met the woman there. And he lifted her to new life. Yes, this week's gospel story is a powerful one. And one that speaks to us today on so many levels. In many ways, it seems like not a whole lot's changed about human behavior. We still make judgments and assumptions about people who are other or different, particularly the marginalized and the ones who lack access to voice or power. Just listen to how people still Still, after all this time of so-called social awareness, still talk about the working poor in our culture. You'll hear plenty of heated rhetoric justifying why some people should be entitled to all the benefits of this land of plenty, and while others deserve or choose to live in want. Oh, that's what their decision, they just have to deal with. Fingers point, accusations fly about motivation and behaviors and willpower that actually have a whole lot more to do with defending positions of privilege than anything else. Now accuse me of being a Pollyanna, or ridiculously naive, if you will, but I hold facts to the hope and the promise that there's enough for everybody to have basic needs met. We pay attention to how God's economics work. In fact, we know God shows a distinct preference for the poor, the downtrodden and the marginalized, and has no hesitation about breaking society's rules or culture's norms to draw the circle wider and bring everyone to the table. When I was writing this message, I was reminded of a homeless camp in the city where I live. And it was down a small hillock, and it was sort of obscured by some really lovely vegetation. And it really wasn't bothering anybody one bit. And yet, the authorities came with sirens on and lights flashing and took down the tents, took down the lean-tos, took down the stuff these folks have or had with nowhere else for them to go. I'll tell you, my ire was up, and perhaps you can hear that. In this message today, I hear Linda chuckling. We know that God took a ragtag, a small nation of people as the chosen ones, bringing them out of slavery, sustaining them in the desert, and putting up with all manner of nonsense over the course of time. And through Jesus, we have all been invited into that family of God adopted as full heirs of the promise of abundant life, 
and guaranteed the gracious promise and wisdom of the creator of this universe and probably all the others that we don't even know about. And yet, we seem not to have learned from history. In fact, we continue to repeat past mistakes and we fail, along with disciples and apostles and a whole long lineage of faithful folk. We fail to really understand what God has in mind for us. We feast on the word, but we often take it for granted. We don't really hear it, or we interpret it for our own uses. We pick out those verses that we agree with and work with what's going on in our world. And we do it all, all around us, people hunger in so many different ways. Now, it's rather tough to see all this from the heights of privilege. It's a long way down to rock bottom. But see, we must. To bear the name of Christian, we must see through Jesus eyes. In the Samaritan woman at the well, we dare not, must not see someone other or less than ourselves. Rather, mirrored in her eyes is the reflection of our own brokenness and shame. In the hungry and complaining Israelites whom God so graciously fed and watered in the wilderness, we hear echoes of our own whininess and fear. We're awfully good at whining, aren't we? Everyone has worth. Everyone. And everyone matters to God. And we all hunger and thirst for the same basic things that only God can provide. And our Creator is momentously generous, meeting our needs and lifting us up from the muck of our own making and claiming us as part of the family. And can we not extend that same generosity to our sisters and brothers in the name of Christ? Can we not hear Jesus' words to his disciples later in this, own, in this same gospel lesson, reminding them about sowing and reaping, and how everything is interconnected? It all works together. Oh, enough my ranting, you've heard enough. So my bottom line is this. There is enough. We can be generous and we can believe in God's gracious provision for the whole world. All of us, every single one of us has worth it and are created in the divine <clears throat> image of God. Makes me wonder what God really looks like. God looks like all of us. And may we be bold and fearless in feeding hungry hearts and quenching thirsty spirits while sharing and caring for each other's basic needs. We are all thirsty people. May your hearts be broken open by God, rather than hardened by the realities of this world as we often find it, so that you may pour out extravagant, quenching love without fear of ever being thirsty again.
So I ask you, who would like a drink? Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious God, may we be reckless in our love of one another and generous in our offering what we have to share with our brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. As we come into a time of prayer, I invite you all to just relax those shoulders and clench those jaws, relax those hands. Let us take some time to be with God. <clears throat> Holy One, be with us this morning as we find ourselves well into the season of Lent and turn our eyes to the horizon and the coming of Easter. Help us to see this as a journey where we cast away our struggles and our demons in hopes of receiving you more fully into our lives. We ask that you make this Lent a season where we find our way out of darkness and our way back to you. Today we lift up the names of our friends, families, and neighbors that grieve. We pray that their trust in you will be strong. Your promise is that you will stand with us, for us, when we hurt. Your promise is to heal our hearts when they break. In this time of Lent, let us feel your presence again. This morning we raise our celebrations and joys. Help us to see these moments as blessings from you. Let these moments of smiles and laughter provide the strength we need when times get tough. Help us to find the joy in every moment. Remind us that in your church there is a home for each of us and a role for each of us to play. Help us to hear your calling for us during this Lenten season. We raise these prayers with words that do no justice to our fears or desires, along with the prayers we've yet to understand or express. Ultimately, Lord God, we belong to you. And for that, we are truly thankful. Amen. Our closing hymn, I think, is probably a favorite of many of us. A wonderful tune from Ray Fawn Williams. You'll find it at number 626 in your hymn books. I heard the voice of Jesus. I invite you to stand in body or in spirit.
as we go out into the world. We're going out often into things and places and situations that are unknown to us. And we're not sure how we're going to react to something that's new and strange. May that which is other be all right with us because all the others, the strange ones, the different ones, are all God's children as we are. So as you go out into this week, be blessed by the living water with which you will never be thirsty again. Go knowing the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Go knowing who you are. Go remembering to whom you belong. And let us sing our benediction of peace. The words are in your bulletin. <clears throat>